Dave here, how are you? Today I'm going to show you how to build a hinge from wood. That's exactly what I've done with this blanket box that I've just finished building. There it is there, timber hinge. Stick with me, I'll show you how to do it. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It's really easy and it costs you nothing. It's easier than you think. This is the piece of stock that I'm going to create the lid for a box and it is 18 millimeters thick. This could be three quarter, it could be half inch, it could be 10 millimeters, it could be 12 millimeters. It really doesn't matter, but this particular one is 18 millimeters. The first thing we need to do is create a hollow and also another piece that is a round. These will end up marrying into each other. To create the hollow, I used a three quarter inch nosing bit. I just took it so that there was about a millimeter of flat either side when I put this over the router table. Very important because if you take the full amount out as you're pushing down, there'll be nothing to support as it's coming out on the out feed of the router table. Now that you have the hollow done, put that to the side, we create the round. And how I created the round on this was I used a 3 8 round over cutter. I ran it through the router table on one side and then I turned the piece over and ran it through on the other side. I spent a little bit of time adjusting it and I had my hollow there waiting and I could just keep on popping them in and checking until I had a perfect match. Now the same thing's going to happen if you're using half inch stock. Use a half inch nosing bit and a quarter inch round over. Easy. These are 50 millimeters wide or very close to it. So I needed to use some stock that was longer than 1100 millimeters long because I'm going to lose around three millimeters per cut. Now there's around 20 of these knuckles. So 20 times three is about 60 millimeters I'm going to lose in sawdust. So make sure you've got enough. Actually, make sure you've got a bit more than that so you can cut a few spares. It's handy. We've got our round over created on that length. Now we're going to rip it to width. And that's this width here. The knuckles of the hinge are going to be required to do a fair bit of work. So give yourself a little bit of space at the back here because also we're going to cut this part into being a receiver for the knuckle. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So I made mine about 30 millimeters wide. Next thing to do after I've ripped 30 millimeters on the table saw, so I've got a really nice long length of this particular profile, then I'm gonna set up my table saw sled. I'll put a stop, lock it on with a clamp. I'll cut the end off to start just so I've got a nice square end. And then I'll feed the timber across to the stop. I use a pencil with an eraser on the end to hold the piece of stock in position and then trim it. As each piece comes off, use your pencil and write on it. So I just wrote number one on that one. The second one it comes off, I'll write number two, number three, number four, and so on, and pile them all up. Doesn't matter if I put them out of order because they're all numbered. There's a reason. Now, once I've done all that, I then take this over to the drill press and I make a jig. Now the jig has got to be able to hold this perfectly so that when the drill enters the wood, it's going to be dead center of that circle. So there's, we've got a semicircle here, 18 millimeters wide, nine millimeters to the center of the circle, the half the width of the timber, and nine millimeters down from the point of the arc, from the, from the arc. So that's going to be dead center. So no matter where this rotates in the hinge, it will always be pivoting from the center of the circle that we've created for the hinge. Okay. So the drill press, you have to set this up so it's perfectly perpendicular. It's going to go down straight. Your fence and your jig have to hold this bit of wood perfectly straight up and down. <laughs> it can't be tipping over at all. It can't be tipping this way at all. Make a jig, glue the jig together, with this sitting in the center of it at the perfect position, put some stops in either side, glue them on to the backing board, 
let that dry. So every time you put another piece in to the drill press, it's going to put that hole in exactly the right position. I used a quarter inch drill and I've got quarter inch down for my hinge. Once you've got all these cut, then we can move on to ripping this piece, our hollow. So we feed in the knuckles onto our dowel. You can see they're going on nicely. So we have our pieces fed on. Feed them on in the order that you wrote on them, one, two, three, etc. Here's the interesting part. We get our section with the hollow in it, put it on the table, and I'll turn it around this way for you so you can see it easily. We put it beside it, like so. Can you see it there? I've got that one piece there. Slide the, uh, the next knuckle up to it and roll it over, like so. Where that knuckle is, we can now put a little pencil mark on there. And I'll bring it up and show you. So there you can see we bring the knuckle up and pull it up against there. And you can see I've got the pencil line. We're going to rip to that width on the table saw, right the way along. Next, we have to create the easing section on the back of the hollow. And I do that by setting the table saw to 15 degrees. Mine's a left-hand tilter, so I'll tip it over at 15 degrees. And I'll lower the blade down so it's only protruding above the table by nine millimeters. Then I get the fence and I put it onto the left hand side of the blade. I'm not going all the way through. My plan is to come halfway up. This is important. This is what I don't normally have my fence on the left hand side. It's normally on the right hand side. I set the width of the fence to the blade by doing a test. I just do a little test cut where that pencil line is. That's what I want to cut off. Now that will allow my hinged piece of wood to go past 90 degrees by 15 more, 15 degrees more. You can set whatever angle you want. You can go to, go to uh, zero or, or 90, and so the hinge will only open to 90. Now you're going to take this ripped piece of stock that's got the relief cut into it to the table saw sled, and you have left the stop in exactly the same position don't touch that, leave the clamp on it, slide the piece of hollow along, dock the end off to start, get it nice and square, then do exactly the same process as I did before. Number them. Doesn't hurt as they come off. One, two, three, holding the piece with a pencil with the eraser on the end. Stack them all up. Put them to the side. Now the next part. This is so easy. We're going to get some blue tape. Every second knuckle, we're going to rotate over. Pull them all up nice and tight and put some blue tape over the whole lot to hold them steady. It's an idea to have some baking paper or something like that underneath so you don't get glue all over the place. Put it on a board of some sort so that it's not going to have the knuckles all over. They've got to be perfectly flat. Run glue right the way along the receiving piece on both sides. And then it's a matter of piece of wood on that side as well. Clamp it all up. I'm not going to tell you how to clamp it up. Don't put too much pressure on it. Just put them in. Now remember, every second knuckle is going to be rotated over. So the number is not going to be showing to you. Now this is important. So you'll have one will show. Two will be not showing, it'll be flipped over. Three will be showing up to you. Four will be flipped over. Five showing up and so on. This is important because that will maintain the grain in the same direction. We're not going to turn the piece of wood around backwards. We're just turning it over. Now that we've got it clamped, try and leave all the top open. If you put too much pressure on, the board might pop. Don't put too much pressure on. 
Now what we've got to do is we've got to get all of the parts of the receivers and we're going to glue across the back and we're going to push them in alternating all the way down. So, and they will sit up proud by one or two millimeters. That's fine. Leave them like that. Don't put too much pressure on. Just push them in so that the glue is going to squeeze out a little bit at the back. Let it dry. Sand it all down. Take the loose pin out. And then get a pencil sharpener and sharpen the end like an arrow. That'll make it a whole lot easier when you try and put the pin back in. This is such a simple way of creating a timber hinge. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It's really easy and it costs you nothing. There's a link down there. Click on it and click on it again once you've subscribed and the bell icon will come up. Click on notify all and anytime I do a video, you'll get an email saying Dave's doing something on YouTube. Bye. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching and I shall see you next time. Bye. This is so much. I love this stuff. I love it.